Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss on Vagrant. We are going to cover what is Vagrant, why do we need Vagrant, installation of Vagrant, and some important commands of Vagrant. And we are going to see how to create a Vagrant network and share folders. So Vagrant is a tool which helps us to build a complete environment. So for example, if you need four virtual machines and in the automated way, Vagrant is a good option. But Vagrant is used mostly in the development environment, not in the production. Because production environment, we have enterprise tools which help us to do the same. But Vagrant is very handy if you want to develop a four virtual machine and inside that four different application, Vagrant can do that. So what basically Vagrant is? Vagrant help us to define the infrastructure as a code. Let's say example, I need a two virtual machine with five GB of RAM and two core CPUs. It's possible, yes. We can write this code in the Vagrant file and after that, Vagrant can do the job creating a machine without any human intervention. And the interesting thing about the Vagrant is Vagrant have its own cloud and from where we can get the ready-made images. So we do not need a time to install the operating system. We do not need it because the operating system pre-installed images are available on the Vagrant cloud. So let's say example, we need CentOS 7, Ubuntu, or any image with the installed software like Apache. This kind of all images are available on the Vagrant Cloud. We can download and start using it. So Vagrant allow us to do the multiple things like installing the operating system of our choice, modifying the RAM, CPU, we can work on the network interface by using the Vagrant. We need an IP, we can define it. We need the NATing, we can define it. Everything we can do in the Vagrant. Vagrant allows us to set up a share folder. What does it mean? For example, I am running Windows. And top of that, I have the virtual box. In virtual box, I need two virtual machines. So between two virtual machines and my Windows machine, we can share a folder between them. So that will be help to take the data from windows to linux or linux to windows so that is all possible using the vagrant now one thing is very important to understand vagrant is not virtualization software like virtualbox it allows us to automate the virtualization it is not an virtual software like virtualbox what it means it means we need some virtualization software Vagrant not have that capability to provide the virtualization. Either we need KVM or we need VirtualBox or we need Hyper-V, any, any kind of virtualization we need. Vagrant will allow us to automate the process. All right. So we'll see that how basically it works. We can set up the host key. Uh, that means uh, their public key. We can, you know, copy it so they can log in without any password. So that's all this all we can do with the Vagrant. Another important thing is that we can run the number of command in the Vagrant. What it means? It means, for example, my OS boot, I need 10 packages need to be installed at the time of uh, first installation. So it will do that. Let's say example, I have installed CentOS and I need Apache need to be installed in that. So I will write in the same file. It will create a CentOS and after that it will install the number of packages we had defined in the Vagrant file. That is all possible with the help of Vagrant. Now Vagrant need virtualization software. So we can download the virtualization software from www.virtualbox.org slash wiki slash downloads. From here we can download. And to download the Vagrant software, we can download from the link www.vagrantup.com slash downloads.html. And we need a git bash. Git bash, why? Because its GUI is good to work as compared to the CMD. 
So it's optional. If you do not need, you can work from the CMD that is command prompt of the Windows or putty session or terminal from the Linux. Another important thing is Vagrant is multi-platform. So if you want to download on the Linux box, possible there is a downloads available on the same page. If you want to download on the Windows box, no problem, we can do that. So it's a it's a multi-platform. So all the different softwares are available for the respective platforms on the same page. And VirtualBox is also multi-platform. So you can download on the Linux also, you can get the download for the Windows also. So this is how it looks like the installation part. So we have to click on the exe if you are working on the Windows machine. We have to click on next, next, and after that finish. And uh, here it get installed. To install the Vagrant is also very simple. To, uh, it's We have to follow the wizard. You have to say next, next, finish. So it get installed. And same way we can install the git bash. So the all three when we install, we can open the git bash and we can run the command vagrant dot exe hyphen hyphen version so we'll get the version all right and uh, and uh, after that we can start working on the vagrant so once the vagrant is installed we can uh, start working on it and here is a few terminology like vagrant base box so base box is a virtual machine packed into the single file so that we called as a base box all right so basically it's a called as a template. So we, uh, when we do the lab, we'll see the how the template is look like. Vagrant box is an instance of virtual box VM. So any any virtual machine is running, we call called as a vagrant box. So either it, it can be running on the virtual uh, Oracle virtual box or it can be running on the KVM or Hyper-V, we call as a vagrant box. Provision, provision means configuration steps. So that we call as a provisioning. Vagrant file is very important. This file having all the code. So we talk about infrastructure as a code. So where we write that infrastructure as a code. So the Vagrant file is a file where we write the infrastructure as a code. So all the code, like what operating system we want, how much RAM we want, how much CPU we want, what number of packages we have to install in that operating system everything we can define in the vagrant file so our next goal will be in the next video we'll see how to write the vagrant file and how to use it so this is a common example for example if you want to install the ubuntu so what code we have to write in the vagrant file so here if you look at we have written the three line of code to deploy the vagrant uh, to deploy the ubuntu machine so vagrant dot config we can write configure or we can write config that will work two is a version so on which version we are working so two after that do variable any variable you can take so this is a variable name it's not uh, mandatory uh, we have to take config you can define your own variable so variable definition is done then after that you are saying variable name dot vm dot box equals to Ubuntu slash trusty 64. So it will go on the Vagrant cloud. It will download this image for you and install that image for you. So very interesting. Three line code, you will get the Ubuntu machine. Next, let's say example, I have to forward the port of this virtual machine on my 8080. It's possible, yes. So my guest port is 80, forward to 8080. So whatever the services is running on the port 80 in your guest operating system, that is in Ubuntu, you will get on the Windows machine on the port 8080 if, in case if you are running your virtual machine on the Windows operating system. So that means on host machine, you will get all 80 service access on 8080 of the base machine. So it's a port forwarding, not much. For example, I have to define the IP address in the Ubuntu machine. How I can do that? I can do that with the private underscore network. So config hyphen VM hyphen network, private underscore network, and after that IP address. So here I am writing 192.168.300. So this is the IP address of this guest machine that is Ubuntu Trust 64. How I will share the data between the windows and the guest machine? Is possible? Yes. VM dot synced folder synced underscore folder this is my 
the current folder that is my the host machine folder and this is my other linux machine that is windows uh, ubuntu machine so this folder gonna share with there so whatever the data will keep in the data folder it's accessible in the slash vagrant underscore data on the ubuntu machine all right so source destination easily synced with the command vm dot synced underscore folder how i can write number of command inside that virtual machine which is which get created so my virtual machine get created with a ubuntu machine right after that i have to install two three things like first i have to update it second i have to install apache so the syntax is config dot vm dot provision so this is very important dot provision what we have to provision we have to write the shell command so shell comma inline after that syntax capital shell and here we have to write number of command so keep writing your command here but make sure here we have given the tab because this function is inside under provision so tab and after that all the command let's say example you have to run 10 commands write down the one by one 10 command and after that complete it with capital shell because here we have started with a shell and we have to complete it with a shell and end why we have to write end because this we have started here do and after that here end so if you have number of do it will come number of end so this all we have written in the one do function so one end is here so once we run this vagrant file will show will we'll go through that how to run the as of now we have created a code that will download the ubuntu machine that will do the port forwarding of 80 on 8080 of base machine that will assign the ip to the ubuntu machine that will share the folder between the windows and linux machine and that will also run the set of two commands on the ubuntu machine after vm creation so let's say example someone want to run this file but they want two machines maybe server one and server two is possible yes we have to write vagrant dot config here version do config this do config will define one variable and here you are defining one virtual machine config dot vm dot define server one all right do server one. so you are taking another variable server one dot ubuntu another variable you are defining here end is here so do end and now you are deploying the another machine config dot vm dot define server two do server two server two dot vm box ubuntu trusty 64 so what is the difference so here we have taken the two variable config is a common variable both both machines are using the same variable config you can see here config config but this config defining another variable called as server one and next in set we are using the same config to define another variable server two so from config we have defined the two variables server one and server two and with the help of server one we have deployed the ubuntu trust 64 for the server one and with server two we have defined the same operating system ubuntu 64 trusty 64 for the server 2 when we run the, this machine it will create two virtual machines operating system remains same but one is server 1 another is server 2 so if we have requirement of having multiple virtual machines we can define with the number of variables so if you need three so you can write another another set here config dot vm dot define colon server 3 do server 3 and after that server 3 dot vm box equals to operating system name so it can be any name centos slash 7 it will install the centos 7 all right so these are all commands we can run on the vagrant so vagrant version to check the version vagrant box add to add the new base box vagrant box list to list up all the boxes to remove the box we have to run the vagrant box remove to initialize it we have to run the vagrant init so this is very very important command because this command we're gonna run in the next lab vagrant up to make sure your machine start with the help of configuration you have kept in the vagrant file so this is another important command to take the ssh of your vagrant box vagrant ssh vagrant halt is to stop the running vagrant box this all are the important command vagrant lead reload to restart the virtual machine suspend to suspend the virtual machine resume to again resume back vagrant destroy to completely destroy that means delete everything of the virtual machine vagrant global status to display all the configuration status of your vagrant boxes vagrant box 
updated check the updated for the vagrant box so it will check the updates whether any changes is there vagrant box update check the updates for the vagrant box so this all command we are going to use in our lab so we have completed theoretical part in next video we are going to see the practical thank you so much